Hi everyone, hope you're having a good day. Uh, let me pray for us. Lord, we pray that you would be with us, speak to us, O oh Lord God. Use your word, O oh Lord God, to convict us and really have in mind, O oh Lord God, your heart. Forgive us, O oh Lord God, our sinfulness. Let us, Lord God, walk with you, be faithful to you in everything. Lord God, we pray that you would teach us, Lord God, how to love and whom to love and how to be faithful to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So Romans chapter 11, verses 11 to 24, says, Again I ask, did they stumble as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. But if their transgressions mean riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their full inclusion be? I am talking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I take pride in my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection brought reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If not, if the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have been broken off and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not consider yourself to be superior to those branches. If you do, Consider this, you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but you were broken, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you provided that you continue in this kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature and contrary to nature, were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Amen. Uh, here in this passage, Paul is talking about his hopes for uh, the, the for the Israelites or the Jews to um, be once again welcomed into the family of God, and how we as Gentiles um, have been given the blessing of being children of God um, because God has chosen to include Gentiles after the unbelief of the Israelites. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you, when I read this passage, um, especially, you know, it's in the book of Romans, probably a book that I've read so many, so many times, right? And um, this is not a portion that I generally feel very connected to. And um, I know that God is uh, calling me to repentance over that, simply because God is expressing to us through Paul, um, the importance of um, you know his people and specifically the Jews and you know in my mind I have no real feeling towards Jewish people whether for or against right I'm not um, really an advocate you know where I you know feel the need a passionate need to go and share the gospel with Jewish people because I have always felt like there are so many people everybody needs to hear hear the gospel not specifically just the jew the jews who have already rejected jesus you know this is that's my mind and that's my heart and um i feel like god is calling me to repentance um you know it's not that i'm anti-semitic I, I just think that you know maybe i always thought that paul was speaking for his own people right being a jew wanting to bring salvation to the jews but I also realized that Paul is speaking not just as uh, a, a person with Jewish heritage himself, but he's speaking as someone who loves God 
and is broken hearted for those whom God is broken hearted over. And that really does make it different. That really does um, change things. Because I know that God does feel broken hearted over the Israelites and them having fallen away. And it's not just a general, you know, he feels sad about everyone who have unbelief in their hearts, but specifically he wrote of Israel that they are his beloved, his chosen people. And it causes me to realize that they do hold a special place in the heart of God. And as someone who loves God, must also love um, those whom he loves. And um, it means that I need to care about the plight of Jews in my life and those around us, to share the gospel with them, to remind them or introduce them to who Jesus really is and the way that he is the fulfillment of all scripture. And so um, it's a good reminder, a good word of rebuke um, to really care about people that I maybe, you know, didn't really care about too much. And so I'm thankful for that. Let's pray. Lord, help us to have your heart, to share your heart. Help us to care about those whom you care about, your beloved, your chosen people. Help us, O oh Lord God, help me, O oh Lord God, to know what the next steps are, to know what it is that you are calling me to do in response to this word. Give me, O oh Lord God, the boldness, the willingness to share you with all people but even now, specifically, you tell us, even in the book of Romans, Lord God, salvation belongs first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. Remind me of that. Teach me that once more. Thank you, Lord God. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Um, have a great day.